Well, let's see watching Breakfast Central on News Central. It's a Friday, and only fair we go to some entertainment uh, stories. And to give us the latest, it's none other than Gabriel Egu. Yes, uh, Gabby, morning to you. Uh, what's the latest regarding Aquapon Polo and her case? Good morning, all of you. Good morning, Olisa. Now, if you remember, we've been following this particular story, and the story keeps evolving, and we just keep on constantly dropping updates as it evolves. Now, remember last year, Guardian actress Rosemont Brown probably known as Equipem Polo, got a 90-day jail term for posting a nude picture of herself and her son on social media on his seventh birthday. Now, days ago, her appeal to overturn the sentence, handed to her by an Accra Circuit Court in April 2021, was dismissed. On December 6, her legal counsel challenged the dismissal of her appeal by the High Court um, with regard to her 90-day jail term. Now, accordingly, a three-member panel of the Court of Appeal has now reversed the 90 days jail term imposed on her and instead handed her a fine. Now, Eko Pempolo, through her lawyers, has paid the fine of um, 12,000 Ghana cities, equivalent of 1,000 penalty units. They were There were questions about how severe a sentence was and who would take custody of her son while she was in jail. But this seems to be the last move, or should we say not the last move in this saga, because mm. we know that this story keeps evolving. We're not expecting to take this twist, but now that's what we're seeing. Uh, looks like uh, the authorities are really clamping down on her uh, based on what uh, she did uh, with her son, and it's really, really turned heads uh, out there in Ghana. So uh, Akwe Pampolo and her son, well, she regains her freedom. Well, uh, uh, Gabby, <laughs> uh, I think that's perhaps uh, good news in some sense. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so now we're still staying in Ghana. Fast rising filmmaker and director Kukua Eshu recently released her new film titled Unveiling. Now, the film produced by Kukua Eshu and Akpene Deata Hagar is a powerful documentary about rape. It's about two women being vulnerable with each other, sharing their truths, allowing each to see herself in the other. Now, the film commissioned by the N.O. Institute of Arts and Knowledge was first shown at the Museum Oxwell in Dortmund, U on December 10th and would show till March 2020. Now, I think this is great news because that same museum displays the works of legendary artists, including Pablo Picasso and celebrated Ghanaian artist El Anatsu. This film is part of an exhibition by Ghanaian author and filmmaker Nana Oforiata Ayim and what she envisioned when she created FA, the museum as home at the cultural Dortmunder Youth Center. Now, SU has built a legacy of telling stories that carry a message and highlight human experiences. Just as Kukua imagines, I'm sure this film, you know, um, would encourage more people to share their stories and experiences without, you know, the fear of being judged. So I think this is, you know, really great. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, that's a good one uh, regarding another African doing uh, great uh, mm -hmm. that this one is quite art, art culture involved. Yeah, talking about the story of being raped and uh, we hope that this would encourage more people who have been through that horrible mm. experience to come out, speak up and let the, um, the person who did this to you, let the person face justice because if you leave this person, allow the person to go back into society, mm. this is a cycle that will repeat itself. Oh, well, it never stops, uh, does mm. it? Uh, but with artworks like this and uh, great works like this, it just really uh, shines the light Especially when it comes to gender-based violence, yeah, because right. uh, this is uh, issues that women, you know, go through uh, all the time, and it's not being reported about. But when we now project it through arts and film, and film like right. this, yeah, it's only uh, a great one going forward. But we still have uh, Gabby with us. Uh, Gabby, right? So, what's up next on the entertainment scene? I think it involving uh, John Jazzy, right? John Jazzy. Yes, yes, yes. Don Jazzy again is back now. Um, introducing the Kujos is actually the movie, and that movie is back. The family drama is set to um, return with a sequel titled Introducing the Kujus, Finding a Kuju. Now, the anticipated sequel comes after the original film was released last year to positive reviews. In the sequel, the Kujus are again at loggerheads as they spend time together for the traditional wedding of Mayon and Lily. Now, the film's production company, MPL Motion Pictures, also announced a remarkable step to drive sustainability and environmental protection awareness among filmmakers and fans while confirming the plans for the sequel done using paperless production. Now, the thing about paperless production is there were no printed manuscripts. The um, cast of the movie solely relied on e-manuscripts on their tablets. Now, the movie directed by Bjorn Steffen 
and Bissol Ayola, introducing the Kujos, finding the Kujo will see fan favorite cast members such as Bissola Ayola, Timini Egboso, Ronkel Dusonya, Femi Jacobs, and Bimbo Ademoye reprise their roles. I think the exciting part of this is that there will be new additions like John Jazzy, as you said um, from the beginning. And we also have Big Brother Nigeria reality star Lilo Aderogba joining the star studded cast for the movie. It's great to see a nice movie come back with some of our favorite faces on screen, but the environmental consciousness from a movie production company is very commendable. All, all right, uh, Gabby, I, I'm, I'm sure we can you know, watch a couple of these clips so I can look forward to what I'm going to see now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You are the stupid one. It's okay.